Hello and welcome to the Deception Tips Podcast, where you will learn amazing cues to detect deceit that will help you read people like never before. I'm your host, Spencer Kaufman. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Deception Tips Podcast, episode number 75. Last week, we talked about a sign of deception related to sighing. Now remember, sighs can be two ways. They can either sigh before something is going on, as in contemplation. So they're thinking about whatever is about to happen, whatever they are about to talk about or deliver, anything like that. It is a sigh of preparation. The other type of sigh that can happen is one after the fact. This is a relief sigh. After they've delivered whatever they're going to deliver, they've said their piece, whatever the case may be, the situation is over, they sigh a sigh of relief. So those are the two types. Now within those sighs, there are other types. So within the preparation sigh, they can either be sighing to give themselves a little bit more time to think about what's going on, to think about what they're going to say, to kind of clean out their mind, prepare themselves. It is a time buyer. They are using it as a stalling tactic, similar to things like rephrasing the question or repeating the question, which are other tips that we have discussed in past episodes. In addition, they can also do it ahead of time in an effort to kind of show people that they have something on their mind, like they might sigh to solicit someone else's sympathy or their advice or something like that. They may let out a sigh and then they're hoping that other people will say, what's going on or what's wrong or what's on your mind? Things like that because then they are soliciting assistance from other people really is what it is. They are kind of asking for help in the use of a body language gesture or a verbal gesture is what it is. So those are the two ways that it can happen before. That is with the introductory sigh or the before something happens, the contemplation of a thing. Then we switch over to after. So as we've said, they sigh in relief. This would be typically after they have either made a big decision or they have delivered their speech or maybe they've delivered their lie and now they're sighing in relief that it's done with. Usually you may see this after someone takes a big test. They sigh kind of like, whew, I'm glad that's over. That kind of a thing. So keep in mind, there are two different types of sighs and there are a couple different types within those types that you will see. For a recap of all of that and more detail of it, I encourage you, if you haven't already, to listen to episode number 74, which was last week's episode. And if you just want a quick recap, you can watch the video on the Deception Tips videos, which is on the Body Language YouTube channel or on DeceptionTips.com. So you can check all that out and kind of get a better idea. I also encourage you to touch on all of the past episodes that we've mentioned leading up to that. As we've said, sighing is very closely related to breathing, and we've had quite a few breathing episodes, such as people taking a big deep breath of relief or letting out an exhale, almost like sighs of breathing kind of a thing. They, they aren't sighs, but they were related to breathing. All right, so today we have another tip. This one is a confidence gesture. It is something that people do when they feel superior, when they are in charge. So if you see somebody doing this, hopefully they are in charge and hopefully they are the boss of that situation because if they're not, then they may have some kind of contempt towards the boss or towards the authority. They may wish that they were in charge or they may believe that they are better than whoever is in charge. So if you are a boss, a little tip here, if you are a boss and you see your employees or your underlings or whatever you call them doing this type of a gesture or other confidence type gestures at some form of meeting or interaction, then you may want to consider that their attitude may not be correct for what you want them to be doing. And if that's the case, then you need to have a little conversation with them and determine what's going on and why they are 
behaving like that, why they think that way, because something is a little bit off. So here it is. This is deception tip number 75. Steepling fingers mean confidence. Liars may display this when they believe they have fooled the target. Here it is again, deception tip number 75. Steepling fingers mean confidence. Liars may display this when they believe they have fooled the target. All right, so as I said, this means confidence. They are confident in whatever they have done or whatever they are about to do. They're confident in who they are, but it's related to the situation. So this is different than overall confidence. People can be confident in who they are and in what they're doing. They're typically not going to be flaunting it. This is like a direct show. When someone is steepling their fingers, they are alerting everyone else around them that they are in charge. They are the confident people and they want other people to show it. They are demonstrating their superiority in this situation. They're showing people that they know what's going on, that they are the best, and that whatever they do is superior. It's kind of like a narcissism complex. They're not really narcissistic personality disorder, but if you see the steepling of fingers, they may have narcissistic traits. Now keep in mind, a lot of big leaders and great leaders, they have narcissistic traits. Why? Well, because in order to be a great leader and in order to be confident and in order to not let your failures get you down, you need to have that narcissistic traits or tendencies in you. So keep that in mind. This isn't entirely negative, but it is something to watch out for. So keep that in mind because it is important. Now, when you see this, like I said, it is something that people will do to just simply kind of show off. They want to show other people that they are the ones who know what is going on. They may be feeling, like I said, contempt for the boss, which we talked about contempt in episode 19. And if you ever see contempt going on, then you definitely need to have some kind of a conversation with that person. Again, that was episode 19, so I encourage you to review that one because that is something that if you ever see that, then you know that there's trouble. This could be a precursor to that contempt. If the boss is talking in a meeting and this person is steepling their fingers thinking that they're superior to the boss, you may want to watch for contempt to come out when the boss says certain things. That person may give a contemptuous look. So, we're going to talk a lot more about this and a lot more about the other tips that are related to this that we've already covered coming up right after this. Want to be an expert at detecting deception? Download the Deception Tips ebook and swipe through the pages while waiting in line, in the elevator, or anywhere you have a few minutes to spare. Download it today at spencercoffman.com. Welcome back to Deception Tip episode number 75, where we are talking about steepling fingers. And when people steeple their fingers, they're most likely a little bit more confident than the other people who aren't. These are the people they're kind of showy confident. They're a little bit arrogant, if you will, or pompous. That is the correct term, is arrogance. These guys believe that they are better than whatever else is happening, that whatever they have in their mind, they know what's going on and everybody else is fooled, or they're better than being in this meeting, or they don't need to be here because they already know this and it's a waste of their time. They're thinking in terms of this arrogance and that they're time is more valuable than everyone else's. They are better than other people. Now, this isn't really what happens all the time. Remember, there are exceptions to every rule. People could steeple their fingers simply for something to do or fidgeting. You don't always know that this is exactly what it means. It's like any one of these lying behaviors, you need to look for the patterns and clusters. But typically, steepling fingers is a part of this behavior. It's a part of this mindset. It's a part of the arrogance or cockiness that goes on. You could see the boss do this. You could see people in charge do this because they're rightfully in charge. They rightfully know more than everyone else just due to their position. 
All right, so another tip that was related to this, remember that people who are less confident tend to take up less space. They don't want to take up a bunch of space. They don't want to flaunt everything that's going on. They are going to shrink down. We talked about taking up less space or taking up space in episode 40. That was when typically how liars tend to shrink because they don't believe in what they're saying. And then we talked about the opposite of that in episode 60 with dominate space, how confident people will dominate the space they occupy. Go into a board meeting sometime and you take a look at the people around the table and see who has their stuff sprawled out. Table space is personal space and is perceived as importance. So whoever occupies the most table real estate generally is going to be the one controlling that meeting. That's a little tip for you. If you're in a meeting and you're an employee or you're just there to attend, take your papers and, and spread them out a little bit. Put your coffee cup a, a little further out. Put your pen a little further out. Don't just keep it all in a neat little stack. Occupy a few feet of that table and people will think you are more important. It's just how it works. You look at the person presenting, they've got half that table covered with all their stuff. It may be an end, it may be a quarter of the table, whatever the case may be. Area-wise, they have quite a bit of table taken up. You look at the boss, the boss of the table, he'll be at the head of the table. It may be leaning back in the chair, may have the feet up. They're taking command presence of that table. They may have their stuff spread out. It's a very, very common thing to see when someone is in charge. So you look at that dominating space. Now, add the gesture of steepling fingers, where would that go? Well, it fits perfectly with the person who's leaning back in their chair, feet up on the table. Why? Well, because it just goes with that. It's part of a natural cluster of behaviors. When someone leans back in their chair, their fingers go to that steepling. What does it look like? It kind of looks like praying hands but they're separated the fingers and there's a gap, kind of like they have a little snowball in their hand. They're packing that snowball together. Their fingers are steepled. They may be tapping them together or they may just have them together. But they're steepled fingers. Why is it steepling? It's like a church steeple. A little background on it. Probably should have covered that long before, but that's okay. So it's like a church steeple. Every one of their fingers is that church steeple and it is a display of confidence and authority. So when you see that, if you see it by your boss, it's perfectly normal. That is fine. If a boss or if you are in charge and you see it by somebody who is technically lower on the totem pole than you, then you need to pay attention to that because you either have a problem with that person in terms of their behavior and their attitude, or if that person has been a great employee, they are doing really well, then that person may be a natural leader and you can groom them to become someone in charge and lead the people and be a supervisor or a manager or a boss or whatever the case may be because that means that that person has those natural leadership or confidence tendencies and characteristics. So pay attention to that. Look out for the patterns and the clusters that go with it. Watch for it. Remember, it's not a problem unless you start seeing contempt. If you start seeing contempt or disgust or that disrespect, then it becomes a problem and you need to have a serious conversation with whoever that person is because they are going to have a disregard for your authority and they probably will be very disrespectful. And that's something that you want to handle right away. So I want to thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Deception Tips podcast. I hope that you'll share it with your friends, subscribe to the feed, Check out the Deception Tips videos, the blog, and take a look at the books I have available. And as always, tune in next week for a new Deception Tip.